This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. Brian, welcome to AMN Drive Time. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Bill. Glad to be here and, and looking forward to our conversation. So, Brian, you've been involved in the automotive industry for some 33 years. You've been with NGK since 2016. Before that, you were involved with some very significant brands, Carter, Carter Fuel, Trico, Pilot Automotive, Federal Mogul. Why don't you tell the audience of AMN about how you got involved in the aftermarket and the career path you've taken? Yeah, thanks again, Bill. It, uh, it's been an interesting journey, uh, to say the least. Uh, I went to a, uh, uh, a non-automotive school, you could say, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, called Aquinas College, run by the Dominican brothers and sisters. And, and it was just going at a time in my, in my life to get a degree. Uh, I watched my brothers and my sister, I come from a family of five, all do very well at the time in their life without having a college degree and, and working for General Motors. And I thought that was gonna be my career path after I got my BS, uh, BA from Aquinas. And uh, uh, the college interviewing season started out at Aquinas and uh, Federal Mogul came on campus and just really had a, a good interview with the, uh, the folks from Federal Mogul and got invited down to a, a second round interview, which was to this date is probably still the most intense interviewing process I went through. Uh, I had a, an interview every half an hour uh, on the hour with different people from functional area and they were hiring people into their, their management trainee program is what they called it. And after a day of spending uh, with the, the Federal Mogul folks in Southfield, Michigan, uh, that is something that I, I, I could really see myself doing and lo and behold, I got the job offer to uh, to work for Federal Mogul and uh, started out their management training program and started out in manufacturing in Van Wert, Ohio. Um, didn't know anything about manufacturing. And, and really, to be honest with you, I wasn't a car enthusiast. I didn't work on cars. Um, so I found myself going to Federal Mogul, which at the time was just doing engine bearings and ball bearings. They were a small company back in, in the late 80s. And um, uh, obviously grew tremendously over the next uh, 25, 30 years. Um, but I started out in production control in Van Wert, Ohio. And um, uh, fortunately, I had an angel uh, in Southfield, Michigan, who was keeping his eye out for me. His name was Don Thorpe, uh, God rest his soul. Um, he was the national sales manager for the sales division that called on Napa. And uh, every time I would come back to Southfield, he would always look me up and we'd have lunch or, or have dinner and he wanted me in the sales group. And um, uh, he got his wish and I went into to Napa sales for Federal Mogul. Uh, I spent some time there and then I went into heavy duty sales um, and then uh, into distribution. And then they brought me back to, to be in finance. So the first eight years, uh, I really got a good dose of being a management trainee in different functional areas from sales and distribution and uh, finance. So very fortunate to be able to do what I what I I did at Federal Mogul, and that was really uh, a great job. And, and I hate to call it a job because I I had a lot of fun. And you hear that cliche a lot that uh, people don't call it a job because you're having fun and. The group of people that I worked with at Federal Mogul in the different roles and responsibilities that I had at Federal Mogul, um, it, it was just great. We had a lot of fun, and I did that uh, for almost 20 years uh, in a variety of fun uh, functions. And when I left there, I was the, um, the executive director of retail uh, at Federal Mogul, having responsibility for the retail group, calling on all the retailers, and uh, just had an opportunity to come across to, to go to Trico and be the vice president of sales and marketing at Trico. And uh, I worked there for a couple of years. And um, uh, shortly after that, uh, I went to a, a different part, I feel, of the automotive world. Uh, I got out of catalog parts or application parts, as we refer to it, or a lot of people refer to it. And I went to work at Pilot Automotive. Um, I got to stay in Michigan, which is where I was from, born and raised. 
And uh, Pilot Automotive is a, uh, a great company that does accessories, uh, mirrors, collision program. And, and I worked there for an entrepreneur by the name of Kelvin Wang and taught me a lot, uh, taught me uh, not to make business so complex. Um, and I always said it was easier for him to say that because he had a lot of people doing the work uh, with him. But uh, I spent some time there. And then um, uh, shortly after uh, pilot, um, I, uh, uh, I spent some time at Carter Fuel Pumps when they got spun off from Federal Mogul. And then I've been at NGK since. I just celebrated my five-year anniversary at NGK. I joined them in uh, late 2016. And um, as you mentioned, Bill, some very good brands. And uh, boy, having strong brands really make a person's life, especially in sales and marketing, much, much easier than trying to sell a private label, private, private label program, that's for sure. So Brian, I'm a lifelong Ohioan, and I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know where Van Wert, Ohio is. <laughs> yeah, I, either did I, Bill. Either did <laughs> I when they asked me to go to Van Wert, Ohio and, and work in the manufacturing plant. Uh, Van Wert, Ohio is, is right down uh, 275 to 75 if you're coming out of Detroit. And it's between uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana and uh, Lima, oh, Ohio. Sure. Okay. It's right in the middle. Small town, uh, blue, t blue collar town, hardworking folks. And we still uh, are, are not we anymore, but Feder Mogul or Teneco or maybe it's Drive or maybe it's Apollo as we speak today. Um, it's still in Van Wert, Ohio. That was your first job out of college. Brian, what was your first job in high school? What was the first time when, man, I got a job? What, what, was, what, what was that and where was that? Hey, Bill, does uh, being a paper boy count? Yeah, I don't care. Heck, are you kidding me? I hate to say that because I don't know how many people are reading papers anymore because everything's digital. But uh, yeah, I mean, elementary school, uh, my neighbor and I shared a paper route. Uh, we had a couple hundred houses, uh, cash paying job, um, which was just great for a, for a young kid like myself. And uh, but from the paper boy uh, route, uh, my jobs in high school were I worked at Burger King. And then the job that really showed me manufacturing, um, I got to work at a small uh, hole cutting company that made rotor brooches uh, called Hogan's Manufacturing. They've gone out of business since, uh, not too far from my house, but I worked third shift and I got to run three or four different CNC machines um, at night, just cranking out the, the different cutting tools that the, uh, that the organization made. So, and then I went into college and uh, at Aquinas, I was fortunate enough to be an RA, a resident advisor, uh, for three years, and then the assistant resident director my last year. So, uh, um, and I feel that got me ready for, uh, uh, for the, I guess, the career life of, of being a full-time employee somewhere. Brian, you've undoubtedly worked with a lot of big names in the industry at the, at the few places you've been. You, you mentioned a couple, but... Who have been some of the top influencers or mentors in your career? Yeah, Bill, that's, that's tough. I mean, as I mentioned, um, I, I couldn't have asked for a better starting out of college position at Feder Mogul. And the people at Feder Mogul uh, were always enthusiastic. They had a passion for the business. And I learned a lot. Um, I mentioned Don Thorpe. Uh, he's the one that really gave me my opportunity in sales. But uh, another strong mentor was Bob Show. Um, God rest his soul as well. Bob passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, Bob was the national sales manager of heavy duty sales at Federal Mogul and really taught the foundation I, I feel today that I still use with, with my group. And um, the first thing he said to me when I took the job up in Minnesota in heavy duty sales was, um, you know, Brian, um, you know the business, you know the products at Federal Mogul. I, I really don't care about writing big orders here the next three or four months. What I care about is you get to know your customers and establishing a very good relationship with your customers. And um, when I come back up in four months, I'm going to talk to some people and see if they know you. And he did. And that was the way he built, um, I feel, his success was on relationships. 
and getting to know the customer. And it went a little bit, you know, further than that as, as I, as Bob really spent time with me and it was one of federal moguls at the time, largest accounts was Catco truck parts, which was a great organization to be affiliated with. Um, at the time they had 24 salesmen, uh, Harvey Peterson always, uh, demanded that uh, they wear a shirt and tie and the salespeople that worked with them wear a shirt and tie. And uh, it was, it, even though it was heavy duty, it, you were still making professional sales calls. And Bob always, always pointed out, it's, it's not selling that you're trying to do. It's identifying the need of the customer. Don't go out and try and sell our oil bath seals or our tapered roller bearings. Understand the need which it usually is understand the problem that they're having with maybe a competitor seal or a competitor bearing. And then with our expertise, how do you fix that problem? Which goes back to identifying the need and provide the solution. So those two, two gentlemen, Don Thorpe and Bob show were, were really influential in my career. And, and, and I feel bad because I I've had some great managers that have worked very closely with me, but uh, I, I keep going back to my time at Federal Mogul from the people that I spent in distribution um, uh, managing the Skokie distribution facility in Skokie, Illinois, and then to having the opportunity to run distribution, uh, a, a, an arm of the distribution at Federal Mogul uh, was really great for me. Uh, but all the different functional areas I spent time in at Federal Mogul, they were uh, a great training ground. And, and I'm happy to say some of those people are still good friends of mine today, and I still stay in touch with them. Um, just a great group of people. So that that would probably be uh, a couple people, and then obviously Bill, a couple groups at Federal Mogul. So Brian, you touched on it. Uh, as an aftermarket supplier, uh, brand, brand value is, is a critical component of, to the success of your business. How, in your opinion, has the value of brands changed over the years? And how does NGK convey its brand value to your customers? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm sure you'll get you'll get different answers from 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 different folks on this uh, in the months to come. I still think, and we hear about it from our focus groups. Um, brands are strong, and with the do it uh, the do it for me business continuing to pick up with the how technical the automobile is, the technicians want to have a brand they can trust, and they want to do the job one time. And uh, I've been fortunate, as, as you've mentioned, as I've uh, commented on, uh, the brands that I've worked for have been built around quality. And um, anytime you have a quality brand, quality parts, you're going to have a really great opportunity to penetrate the do it, uh, the do it for me business. And um, we've been able to do that. And at NGK, we're very fortunate uh, with the technology that we have. Uh, and as we continue to grow in the internal combustion engine, and, and I know people may raise their eyebrows when I say that with everything shifting to EV, but there's going to be spark plugs being sold for 30, 40 years after the uh, ICE internal combustion engine uh, gets uh, put to the shelf. But having a brand like NGK that is built around quality, uh, we are absolutely fanatical about quality and having the pedigree of the OE business that we have. And we have a, a solid market share business on not only our spark plugs, but also our O2 sensor business that we're heavily OE in as well. That just leads to the doors opening when we introduce other products that we introduced a couple years ago with our NGK ignition coil line and our NTK technical sensor line. And then some of the work that we're doing at NGK outside of ICE and getting ready for uh, parts and being able to supply parts to the EVs. Uh, we're looking at a number of different technology and companies that will allow us to be around for a number of years, Bill. So Brian, the, the, uh, the technician shortage continues to be a critical concern for the future of the aftermarket. I know NGK is actively engaged in, dress, in addressing the issue. If you could tell us a little bit about NGK's involvement, why it's important for suppliers to be involved, and why it's important for suppliers to be involved in the mission, and what could the industry as a whole 
uh, be doing better to address this issue? Yeah, it, great question, Bill. Um, obviously, NGK, we support a number of groups and organizations like a lot of the aftermarket suppliers do. Uh, we also do uh, a number of training and have training programs and portals out there to help those people in Votech, people that are going into the, to the trade. Uh, we want to help them, and we sponsor different scholarships within the industry to be able to do that, like a number of other suppliers that do. Um, I, I feel the supplier organization in the aftermarket, um, they understand the concern of how important it is to have technicians um, and have those uh, service technicians, professionals, to be able to hang our parts and to be trained. Um, so we'll continue to do what we've done and be part of those committees and affiliations to help students or people that have career aspirations to, um, to do that type of work. I think as an industry, we need to continue to show uh, how well, uh, just not the aftermarket is, but how well the automotive sector is for careers. And there have been a number of people that have done very, very well in this field uh, in the automotive side. And I think as long as suppliers like NGK and others that are the market leaders like NGK are and continue to talk about the aftermarket, the automotive sector, how good of a career it can be, I think that's the message that we have to continue to do and, and continue to advertise uh, for the automotive groups. So Brian, I know you talk to a lot of students. And if you were to give some counsel to a college kid coming into the aftermarket, what might you suggest to them as a career path? Yeah, Bill, thanks. Um, as I mentioned early on uh, when I was going through my career, I was fortunate enough at Federal Mogul to be in a, a management training program. And I touched in sales and manufacturing and distribution and finance. And uh, when I speak to classes or I speak to students, the one thing they ask me is how can they find that type of job and why is it important? And I always come back to is, and I deal with this today at NGK and I, and I share this with our HR folks is an organization can't have all specialists. They can, but it may make the process of strategy or problem solving a little bit more cumbersome or time consuming when having maybe 30%, 40% of your population that have spent time in sales, marketing, manufacturing, distribution, finance. Uh, we even put people through the HR rotation at Federal Mogul. And by having that background, those people are able to help others understand who the customer is and maybe some of the problems or challenges they have with the organization. Um, I mentioned Bob's show earlier, and Bob always said, um, there's really two functions of a company from his viewpoint. Now, this was a sales executive and he was a specialist. And his two, his two focuses of a company were to get a customer, which if you work for a company like NGK or a company that has a lot of brands, strong brands, uh, high market share, that's pretty easy to do because people want your product. Sometimes the more difficult thing to do is to keep a customer. And that, that leads me to is when you're trying to keep a customer and you have people working on your team that are just not salespeople, but also come from the distribution side, the manufacturing side, the finance side, they're able to bring solutions to help you keep that customer and keep that customer experience that all, cust that all companies need to have. So I think it's really important to have some generalists within your team and uh, not all specialists. And that's the message I carry here at NGK all the time as I try to get people to move around within the organization just to become stronger. And really, it makes the career more interesting. I, I, I mean, I've loved my career for the last 30 plus years. I wouldn't change it for anything with the experience that I had and, um, and the people that I've met. So Brian, I can tell you're, I think you're in your office. It doesn't look like a home office. So I'm just curious, I can kind of, I can see the background in various things, but what's on your desk right now? Yeah, great question. Probably the probably the wrong time to ask, Bill. I just got back from a, a good five day vacation in Breckenridge, Colorado, and uh, I got to do some skiing with uh, uh, ten of my best friends, um, all guys that uh, went through grade school, high school, and college together. 
Uh, we do it every even year. So every other year we go skiing. So coming back from, from the ski vacation, I'm looking at a budget. I'm looking at some resumes on a position that, that we're hiring. Uh, and I'm looking at a sea of red of emails that I'm going to try and catch up on later on today and tonight and tomorrow. But uh, always a lot of work to do, but it's always fun and always enjoyed working in the automotive sector. So, Brian, we're going to try something new. We're going to go through a lightning round. I'm going to give you two things, and you got to pick one just off the top of your head. Are you ready? Sounds good, Bill. I, I'm sure there's an explanation on the one that I choose, right? No. No. It's all innocent. Uh, oh, this is good. So, Brian, early bird or night owl? Early bird. Summer or winter? Wow. I love them both. Uh, especially since I just got back from a ski trip. Uh, I'm going to say winter. Town or country? Town. Invisibility or immortality? Ooh. <laughs> That's a tough one. I'm going to go with immortality. Beatles and the Stones. Stones. Cash or contactless? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely Apple Pay or credit card. Last one, home or traveling? <laughs> Hopefully my wife doesn't watch this one. Um, I'm going to say traveling. I like to travel for business and pleasure. Brian, you're an aftermarket guy. You got to pick traveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Bill. I've done a lot of it. Brian, it's been great to have you on AMN Drive Time, sponsored by Lightens. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Bill, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be on AMN Drive. Uh, you've had some great guests, and I don't know if it was a, if it was a, a slow month for you and you were looking around, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you picked me, and I was glad I was a part of it. So thank you. This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them.